Thank you for joining us for another episode of Life, Learning in Florida's Environment. I'm Dr. Katherine Clements, the Ecology and Natural Resources Educator here at UF IFAS Extension, Sarasota County. And today we're gonna to talk to you about the carbon cycle. Joining us today will be special guest, Miss Sarah, our 4-H agent. Hi, my name is Sarah Davis and I'm the 4-H Youth Development Agent. And today we're gonna to do an exciting experiment. It's uh, with a few items that you can find um, at home. So once you watch the video, you're more than welcome to try it at home and see what observations you make. So you need a few things, uh, a teaspoon. If you don't have a measuring teaspoon, you can just use a simple small spoon from your kitchen drawer, a measuring cup. This is a half cup, or you can use a larger measuring cup if you don't have the smaller version, a funnel, so that we can pour the baking soda where we need it. If you don't have a funnel, um, you can roll up a piece of paper that can act like a funnel for you. And then you're going to need a balloon, baking soda, and vinegar. First, what we'll do is measure out our baking soda. Uh, you need two teaspoons, so you can easily just reach in the box and get your two uh, teaspoons. We have pre-measured it into a small cup here. So you pre-measure your two teaspoons into a small cup. It could be any cup that you have at home. And then you want to measure out your vinegar. We only need a half a cup. So we're going to take that and um, we're going to eventually pour the vinegar into a recycle bottle that I grabbed from our recycling bin. But you could also use a glass bottle, something that has a small uh, neck to it. So we'll measure out the vinegar and we've got a half cup here, a little bit more in, and then we're going to carefully then pour that into the bottle. So if, if you don't find yourself with measurements, you need just a couple, a little ways up and you a vinegar in your bottle. Then you're going to take your balloon and we're going to pour the baking soda into the balloon. So you can eat, this is what you need the funnel for. And you want to make sure that you get the balloon carefully on the bottom of the funnel. And you want to hold the balloon on the bottom there so it has a nice seal. And then you'll take the baking soda and you're going to put that in the funnel. And then just tap it a little bit so you get the baking soda in the balloon. The next step is to put the balloon on the bottle, but don't let the baking soda get into the bottle. So you wanna put the balloon all the way around the bottle, and then you wanna kinda of make sure that it's there and hold onto it tight, because here comes our experiment part. So you're gonna carefully lift up the balloon and woo! Put the baking soda in the balloon, oh my gosh, bubbling up to the top, and make your observations. Wow, it's even bubbling into the balloon. And if you feel the liquid here, woo, feels a little bit cold. But check that out. You just learned part of the carbon cycle, and we're going to go ahead and discuss that further in our next session. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what happened in that cool experiment that we did with Miss Sarah. So we're going to take a look at this equation that explains what happened. So we had sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. So Na is sodium and HCO3 is bicarbonate. So sodium bicarbonate, we added that to the vinegar and vinegar is a percentage of acetic acid. So this is the molecule of acetic acid. So notice that C is our carbons. So we have carbon, sodium, and oxygen and hydrogens. So we react those two things together and we end up with some sodium and acetate ions left over in the bottle. We also end up with some H2O or water that is left over in the bottle. But what filled up our balloon was carbon dioxide. 
So this reaction is very similar to what happens in the oceans with ocean acidification. Our coral reefs are made out of something called calcium carbonate, which is similar to baking soda. And then as our oceans become more acidic, they interact with our coral reefs and they release carbon dioxide as a product out into the atmosphere. So let's talk a little bit about carbon. Carbon is the sixth element on our periodic table, and it's very important. It is actually the definition of organic. So if you say something is organic in chemistry, it means that it has a carbon backbone to the molecule. And carbon is very important in our human bodies. Our human bodies are actually made up of about 18% of carbon, and carbon is also the fifth most abundant element in our atmosphere. So there are ways that carbon is stored in our atmosphere. C is for carbon, so this is carbon storage. Carbon is stored in phytoplankton, which are plant-based organisms in our ocean. Carbon is also sto stored in our terrestrial plants, our vegetation. It is stored not only in human beings, but in all animals. And then underground, the dead bodies of dinosaurs have turned into fossil fuels like natural gas and oil. And these also are stores of carbon. And then photosynthesis is a process that utilizes carbon in plants to make their own tissues and cells. And of course, the plants then release oxygen. So carbon is stored in plants through photosynthesis. Now we also have ways that carbon can be released from those stores into our atmosphere. Respiration is what we do when we breathe in and out. So everybody take in a big breath. <gasps> you just breathe in the oxygen that was released by plants. And as you exhale, you are breathing out carbon dioxide into our environment. Decomposition is when fungi and bacteria break down dead organic material. Remember when we say organic, that means things that were living that have now died. So their bodies have carbon that are released by decomposition. When we burn fossil fuels, like in our cars, when we use gasoline, we are releasing carbon from storage into our atmosphere. Deforestation, all of that vegetation, especially when we cut down the rainforest, that releases the carbon either through decomposition or through burning, like we see here, of the rainforest that has been deforested. And fire, whether that's in rainforest deforestation or even prescribed fires here in Florida, also releases carbon into the atmosphere. Hi. We're going to talk a little bit more in depth about the carbon cycle. A cycle is a continuous process in our environment, typically of nutrients moving in and out, just like we just discussed about carbon being released and stored. To simplify it, you, carbon can be released and stored into our atmosphere, our ocean, and stored in our land or released from our land. So we're going to talk about that process with the different things that we went over. So animals are store carbon, just like uh, we can have 18% of carbon in our body, a lot of different animals also store carbon. Yet it can sometimes be released through cellular uh, respiration. Like we took that deep breath, we can release carbon and that carbon gets released into our atmosphere and sometimes the vegetation, which can be planted in the land or along our estuaries, these are mangroves, which are great uh, storage for carbon. In fact, the fancy word carbon sequestration, they have 14% rate of storage that they store uh, carbon. So carbon again can be stored in both of these places. And another great store of carbon is phytoplankton. Those are our ocean, tiny little organisms or tiny little plants that store, I think, up to 50% of the world's carbon stored in phytoplankton. Super, super important um, animals, or sorry, and so super, super important plants. And of course, our animals. <clears throat> 
Now plants, through the process of photosynthesis, again store uh, that carbon. And then as animals and plants die, we go through the process of decomposition. So carbon can be released into the atmosphere uh, through this process. And fossil fuels stored deep, deep, deep beneath the earth stored in the land. When we pull those up to fuel our cars through the process of, com er, through the process of com combustion of fossil fuels, more carbon can be released into the atmosphere. Just like we talked about deforestation, when things are cut down, uh, trees are cut down, carbon can be released, and through the process of fire. Now in Florida, we do prescribed fires, which is a healthy way to manage our environment. And they found that a lot of carbon is actually uh, stored through prescribed fires. But in wildfires, they can get a little bit out of control and a lot of carbon can be released through that process. So as you can see, the carbon cycle can be a little bit messy, just like your room, but it's about that process of storing and releasing carbon, which is incredibly important to life on this planet. Thank you, Ms. Sarah, for doing a carbon experiment with us today and talking us through the carbon cycle. Wow, what a mess this is. But as you can see, all throughout the cycle, humans have an ability to impact the cycle in both positive and negative ways. So you may wanna take a moment to think about what you could do differently to have a positive impact on the carbon cycle and our environment. You could even look online for a carbon footprint calculator, which will help you determine your carbon footprint or impact and how you can positively help our environment. Thank you for joining us today at this episode of Life, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.